a car has a significant history file when we're not actually starting a video talking in front of the car. <laughs> if it gets any more significant, it's going to need its own zip code. I mean, if you drop this on someone, <laughs> it's going to hurt somebody. But we're talking about the 1967 Porsche 910 chassis 22 today. So this car is fascinating. Well, the model is fascinating to me because in general, if you've had the honor and privilege to drive a Porsche 904 GTS Carrera, or a 906 Carrera 6, and then the 910, the, the third step of the evolution of the prototypes. It's such an evolution. It's such a statement model. It's my favorite fiberglass model of all the prototypes mm -hmm. because of its usability, because of the center lock magnesium wheels. It just makes it such a dynamo to drive. It's, it's a knife edge car. You, it goes where you want it to be. It's so effective in era. It was obviously effective on the track. It had a short life because the 907 was right on its heels. Uh, but it was a short-lived motorsports pro product, but lived a long legacy, as we know about this car. Well, I think this is, to your point, well, this is the third one of these we've had something to do with, and they only made 27. Yeah. So this is, each and every one of those cars, um, unique in its own right. I love this car for a handful of reasons. I mean, this, this is one of the reasons. Um, when buying and investigating any plastic car people are always dubious of well what kind of history do you have is it the real thing right you know what kind of terrible life did it lead um, and when you go through this file it starts when the car was delivered in 1970 to the first owner three yes. years after the fact um, how could that be Steve? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how Porsche had a handful of these things uh, that were unraced and were sold to people after, you know, its original, um, you know, qualifying seasons of 67 and 68. Yeah. So this car was sold new in 1970, and the paper trail starts then, and it goes right into its racing as a five-year-old car in competitive races. I mean, there's um, bits and pieces in here that show the car racing at, you know, first one, first big race was Watkins Glen in 19... Uh, 72, with Jackie Eeks and Mario Andretti winning the race. And if you go through the uh, laundry list of people that this car uh, competed against, it's remarkable from that period. Then it went to Daytona. Daytona. And it did about 180 laps and didn't finish. Well, I think it's interesting. It also has the motor that was with it since Vasek Polak um, supplied the motor. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's crazy. You go through this, and without flipping through each and every one of these 500 pages, mm. um, Jurgen Barth, Vasek Polak, Johnny Von Neumann, Kevin Jeanette, um, you go through the history of people, Alwyn Springer, um, working on the car when it was uh, first delivered. It's remarkable that it's, this is like a history of famous folks from the Porsche world working on the car. And uh, just... Quickly, um, the last owner, God bless him, restored the car um, to the tune of about 550,000 euros. <laughs> so uh, the identity has since been changed since that work was done, and the car is now painted its factory white. Yep. But if you pick this up, I mean, log books. log books from the period. I mean, these are from 1984. Um, I like this car a lot because it lived in Massachusetts forever mm. with a fellow by the name of Sam Foster. It's got its FIFA card, which is a big deal. If you want to go racing with it now, and this is all that paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then if you go back, there's a section in here which goes back to... But it literally documents every decade of its life, which you and I know in the prototype world is extremely tough to do. Yeah, you don't want to buy a dual identity car and you don't want to buy something that was made up out of uh, thin air, which we've seen. Bits and pieces cars? <laughs> bits and pieces. Yeah, not even bits and pieces. Bits and faux pieces. Um, but yeah, you've, you've got everything in here. And Sam Foster, when he raced it, you know, the car was very famous in Massachusetts. Um, it was really just a a car with a wonderful history and none of it's checkered i mean that that's the other thing it didn't burn to the ground at one time and every single livery that we, it, it was in i like uh, that green livery i think the, sam had it sam had it, it in the, the green, green, the green livery. livery here yeah and a nice this 917 behind it yeah i mean it just is remarkable 
Um, of course, it was Ray Sedona with that flame job, uh, and that's why when the previous owner had it, he had it restored to its Daytona livery. And yeah, there's the picture. Yeah, that's uh, I believe that's Sam in the car running it at speed. And here is a really cool bit of paperwork with Vasek Polak's name on it. And there's a there's a mystery with this because it says. It's gone to Kevin Jeanette, and they spelled Kevin's name wrong. Um, vehicle handled on order of John von Neumann. Yeah. So, again, there is no... Through Vasek. Yeah, and Edward Abate uh, was the first owner of the car, the privateer. Hmm. Uh, and this is it going to Sam Foster, or Sam asking about its history in 1998. Hmm. 24 Hours of Daytona, 1973. Watkins Glen, 1972. Yeah. So... Because Vasek bought it from Ed Abate, the original owner, then sold it to Sam. So, and this is Sam reaching out to him. I love this kind of paperwork, documenting kind of the paper trail. It is absolutely, yeah. And here's Gunner Racing. Yep. They did spell Kevin's name wrong, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, that's spelled right there. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> phonetically, it was good. But these period pictures, I mean, I don't know how that guy being that tall. I assume that's a bait. Mm -hmm. Never even fit in the car. Mm hmm. But different liveries. Mm -hmm. and so it's just a great piece of history. And again, I cannot accentuate how different these are from the 904 and 906. It's just a, such an evolutionary step for motorsports Porsche and the prototypes. Well, I, I think the little uh, geek mm. trivia is that Lotus helped them with the suspension. Mm. So of all things. Um, yeah, the center lock wheels being a big improvement over the 906 wheels. Um, the fenders are more cut down and swoopy, so you don't feel so blindsided as a 906. And I, I love a 906. I love the beauty of it. Um, but if I had to have one, you can take the roof off the center of that car, which we'll do in a second. Open air driving and something like this. Amazing. And you can use it on the road. Yeah, Absolutely. You can drive it to the track, race it on the track, and if you wanted to, drive it home. So here we are with 910 chassis 22, 67 model car. Uh, of course, when you bought this, you brought it over to the shop. We, we imported it. And yep. You said, make it nice, because uh, it was in the Daytona flame livery. Yep. Which, you know, I love the motorsports. I love the prototype white, the Grand Prix white on, on this era of car, the uh, motorsports look. Uh, this car, you know, the previous owner had spent over half a million dollars, euros, on it. Uh, but the windshield is cracked, so we've installed a new windshield. Uh, we've installed new uh, lenses on the front, uh, and we replaced all the broken. That's so often that you see on 910 and 907, 908 models, these went side windows break so easily. And uh, we've replaced all of that as well. And we repainted the car, obviously, and it's, it's motorsports white. But it looks like a different thing. It looks proper now, doesn't it? It looks a lot smaller. It's not, um, it's not confusing to look at. I think the flames were kind of cool. Um, but at the end of the day, this shows the purity of the line better. Yeah. Uh, and this, this you know, really is how everybody thinks of a 910, at least how I think of a 910 in, in the pure white. And um, it's ready to go. Historic racing. It's ready to drive on the street. It's ready to do anything with. It is. It has new tires. It's got, uh, we just did a complete service on it. How long did you have to wait for the tires? It was a, it was a while. <laughs> there's, there's a shortage. There's, you know, as we all know, because of COVID, every, all the distributors are in back order right now. But these are fresh Avons. These are great tires for the track. We have done some promotional videos of driving this on the road. It's remarkable, as you because you've been with us on our adventures in 906s. Mm -hmm. across Colorado, it's remarkable how drivable this is on the road. Of course, this, again, has the benefit of having the six-cylinder engine in it, and there's the mighty flat eight over there, this Type 771. Well, and if I can invoke Jeff Zwart's name here for a moment, Jeff drove this at Laguna Seca for a couple of hot laps, yeah. and he just said, get in it, drive it. Yeah. He said he was, other than needing tires at the time, because that was uh, in the fall, he was like, put tires on this, and the yeah. car is just ready to go. And, you know, listen, I'm Captain Slow. You're not going to put me behind the wheel and get nine-tenths out of this, but Jeff could. Uh, oh, 100% squeeze out the performance out of it. And like you've, you and I have talked many times about experiential cars, this is an experiential car because 
If you wanted to, you could drive to Cars and Coffee. You could go on back roads on Saturday mornings. Moreover, you could go to Rensport. Uh, this is a ticket to Rensport if you're a capable driver, if you had your race license and experience. This is something that offers those kind of lifetime opportunities um, that really punches the card of you know, enjoying life to a different degree. Well, I think the other thing about a 910 is if you look at the folks that have them and you dive into the collections that have them, it's a very sophisticated aficionado's car. I mean, it is guys that really understand Porsche history and driving. They own 910s. Yep. You want to open this uh, yeah. up very gingerly? There we go. All right. Yeah, and this is utterly transformed from when... Yeah, we fixed some, you know, again, they... We fixed some things that were, because of our experience on fiberglass prototype cars, we uh, fixed some issues back here. Now it's proper in the way it would have been delivered from Porsche. And we dry iced the, the engine bay. We did a major service. And this has a really sweet, you know, this has a 2-liter 67 motor. And it's perfect for this car. It, it's funny because I can't imagine... What it would be like with that Type 771 motor? With the Two five. more cylinders? I, I can't imagine because it's bonker. It's bonkers with this, you know. And again, this is such a well-balanced, nimble piece of machinery. It's just a blast, an absolute joy to drive. Yeah, this has been transformed uh, since it's been in your shop, because it was a little grimy. It was a little. It wasn't mechanically challenged at all, but there right. was no. There was a lack of detailing that. Yeah, the last owner and uh, the last couple shops that worked on it and did the restoration on it, again, they it was commercially acceptable to a great many people, but to take it up a notch, mm -hmm. you guys really went above and beyond to make this a bit of a showpiece as well as a fantastic driving car. The duality of this car being, again, the 910 is a special model because you get to have an open top or closed top, you know, going blasting down a back road with the target top out. Or if you go to the track and decide you really want some aero and some non-wind buffeting having the top end. But it's such a cool thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, for, I mean, all kidding aside, for usability too, just getting in and out of it with the top out is so much easier. Yeah, it's a step in. Yeah. And uh, this is such a modern motorsports seating position. The ergonomics of how you sit in there, it's really F1-ish. And uh, you can be a bigger guy and fit in the 910. That's another selling point and usability factor of yeah. this model, where, as you well know, a 904, you can be a bigger guy and fit in there, but the 906 is, it gets uh, about your size. It gets, no, it gets uncomfortable. It gets uncomfortable. So. Are you saying I'm fat? No. Okay, I think you did. Just big That's bone. all right. Just big, big bone. <laughs> heavy, <laughs> heavy boned. So I'm excited uh, to see what this is going to do. I think it's, you know, again, it's going to be the bring a trailer phenomenon, but having this level of cars on BAT is going to be really special and, and kind of fun to be a part of it. Looking forward to it. So I hope this finds a new home. Hope somebody either bids on it and wins or calls us after the fact and says, hey, when can I come see it? That's good. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it.